those of you who don't know me or if you've never been here before welcome my name is Rachel and I'm the owner and creator here at the Eclectic Cottage in Spokane Washington happy Friday I hope you've had a great week so far for today's video I have a thrift flip for you and what I wanted to do today was create one cohesive little vignette so I pulled three different paints out of my DIY line as well as some waxes um, a paper a decoupage paper by Redesign by Prima and a transfer set by Redesign by Prima and I used those products to create one cohesive little vignette so I'm um, using some of the uh, items that I had sitting around in my stash in my kitchen so I hope you like the video and if you do please remember to give it a thumbs up and if you're new here and you haven't already I would love it if you think about subscribing to my channel and then just hit that little notification bell so you don't miss anything and as a reminder any of the DIY products that you see me use in today's video can be purchased through me at my website at www theeclecticcottagespokane.com. I can't wait to hear what you guys think of today's projects and let's get on to the video. For today's video, I wanted to use these products to create a vignette. The transfer set is called An Afternoon in the Garden by Redesign by Prima. The paper is called Midnight Amber, also by Redesign by Prima. And the colors are DIY's Aviary Little Black Dress and Crinoline. The first three projects are all picture frames that I've had sitting around for a while now, and I decided I wanted to add them to this vignette. So this first one, I'm going in with DIY's paint in the color Aviary, which is this beautiful rich green, and giving this one good even coat of that color. Luckily, this paint is so highly pigmented that it only took just the one coat. Once that was done and the paint was dry, I went in with my damp shop towel and distressed this lightly, bringing back some of that white to show through underneath that green paint. I just wanted this to feel a little bit of an antiqued piece. Once that was done and the paint was dry again, I'm going in with my DIY white wax and my soft bristle brush and just uh, waxing this whole piece and then wiping back any excess with my shop towel. Really easy process and I love the way this brings out the detail in this frame. Once that was done, it was time to fill the frame and I decided to do kind of a mixed media. And so I'm using pages out of an old faded book that I've had laying around for a while. So I took the piece that was in the picture frame and used it as a template to cut out uh, the, pig, the page of the book. And then I decided it wasn't quite aged enough. So I grabbed a small brush and my DIY dark wax and just put some wax on the brush just a little bit at a time and in a kind of a swirly motion added that wax to the paper to give it more of an aged patina. Then I took a shop towel and just wiped off any excess because I wanted to put a transfer down and I wanted to make sure it would stick. So I cut out my piece of the an afternoon in the garden transfer that I wanted to use on this and just began placing them and making sure where I wanted them before I actually peeled the backing off and stuck them down. I ended up having to put the, a piece of glass underneath them, uh, trying to push down on the paper towel over the drop cloth was not very helpful. So here I am just using that transfer stick and rubbing that transfer down onto the paper, followed by the cute little butterfly and then some more flowers. Once that was done, I did take my finger and go over everything to make sure it was nicely laid down. And then it was just time to clean up the glass and then put everything back together again. Thank you. 
Project two is the second frame, which is this beautiful oval frame. And for this one, I am painting it with DIY's little black dress. And again, uh, I only had to go over this with one coat of paint. Although that being said, I did have to in a couple of spots where I had missed go back a second time and just uh, hit a couple places where the white was still kind of showing through. Once that was done and the paint was dry, I did the same uh, distressing technique, just using my damp shop towel and going over this, lightly rubbing to bring back some of that white through the black paint. Then it's on to waxing and I'm using the DIY's white wax straight onto the paint, just like with the green one. And once I've got a good coat of wax, I just take my shop towel and wipe off any excess. Next it was time to fill the frame and I took the oval out of the frame and used it as a template to cut out another book page and then use my dark wax the same as the other one to give it a little bit more of an aged patina. And then I'm using this beautiful rose transfer to put down over it. So here I am just using my transfer stick to make sure that that transfer is well adhered to the paper underneath as I peel back the vellum sheet. Once that's done, I just need to clean up the glass and put this back together again. And then this frame is also done. The third and final frame was actually almost exactly the color that I wanted it to be, but I wanted to do a little bit of a different technique to age it and which required it being painted and waxed before I could do anything else. So here I am just giving it one good even coat of DIY's crinoline and then I am going to distress that just a little bit with some sandpaper, uh, trying not to make too big of a mess. And I really didn't want it overly distressed. So just lightly going over it. I think I have 220 grit sandpaper there. Then it's on to waxing. And for this piece, I'm using clear wax. Uh, so this is DIY's clear wax that I'm, again, just using that soft bristle brush to put on and then wiping back any excess with my uh, shop towel. Now for this one, I wanted to age it, but I didn't want to go over it with dark wax because that does make the lighter color paints look a little bit grungy. So here I'm using Decrepit Dust by DIY. This is the dark and I'm just using a fine tip brush and brushing it on everywhere that I want it to look just a little bit more patina. It's a great way to add a little bit of um, patina to a piece without having to go over the entire thing with the dark wax. Now for this one, since it was a little bit bigger and one book page wouldn't fit over the entire thing, I decided to take several of the pages of the same book, tear them into pieces, and then slowly e uh, put each piece down with some Mod Podge. So that's what I'm doing there. Once that was done, I cut away anything that was hanging over my template. And then once that was done, I grabbed my dark wax again and just in that same swirly motion, I uh, went over the entire thing with a little bit of dark wax, heavier in places and lighter in others. And just making sure that I really kind of showed off all of the seams between all the pieces of the book. Once that was done and I was happy with how my background looked, I was on to adding the transfer. So for this one, I'm adding a decent sized chunk of this transfer set. And it did take a little bit of work to get it stuck down just because I used quite a bit of wax on these pages. I did wipe them back as best I could, but I had to be really careful so that I wasn't actually damaging uh, the pieces of the book that were on there. So. It just took a little more time, but I got it uh, slowly but surely rubbing it down. And then I like to put my finger underneath sometimes on these bigger transfers and help push that vellum off. Once that was done, again, it's just time to clean the glass and put everything back together again. I love how this one turned out.
So for project four, I decided I needed to add a little height to my vignette that I'm building. And so I grabbed these two candle holders to do that. Now this one had a pretty decent size hole in the top of it uh, where it had lost whatever the cover is uh, to hold the candle. And it was also really, really rough, almost to the point where you could cut your fingers if you weren't careful. So I'm taking Bondo. Now, I would highly recommend if you ever use Bondo, make sure you do it outside. I knew better and I'm using this in my shop and my whole shop stunk for like three hours after this. So don't do it. Do what I do. Um, anyway, I just smoothed it over as best I could and filled that hole as best I could. And once it was done and cured and dry, I took some 80 grit sand paper and sanded it smooth. This process definitely took me a few minutes and my poor fingers were so sore by the time I was done. <laughs> then it was on to painting. Now I did take these guys outside and give them each a good coat of uh, Rust-Oleum 2X in matte black. And the reason I did that is I didn't want to accidentally at any point go back and see that silver color underneath the black. Then it was on to painting and I am using a little black dress by DIY. This is my favorite black color uh, in the DIY line. And I'm trying to be careful to keep my brush strokes going in one direction um, for both of these pieces so that when I wax, it kind of shows off a little bit of that texture left from the brush strokes. So here I am just using again my soft brush and wiping or brushing the wax on and then wiping it back very gently with my shop towel. It's a very simple process and I am going directly over the paint with that white wax. Here you can see the difference that the wax makes. I just love this look. And so then it's on to the second candle holder. And again, just kind of going in the same direction as I did with the paint around the candlestick and then wiping it back very gently with that shop towel. I absolutely love how both of these came out and you can't honestly even tell that that one was ever even broken. So my fifth and final project in today's vignette is this cute little riser that I picked up just recently at the Goodwill bins. So this was originally white. I don't know what it was painted with, but it honestly came off on your hands. Every time I touched it, I would come away with little bits of white paint. So I'm going in with DIY's Aviary, which is this beautiful rich green, and giving this two good even coats of paint. And I'm only painting the, the bottom, the feet, and the sides with the aviary, and then I'm going to paint the top white. So here I am just putting on that second coat. I used my spray bottle mainly because my aviary is super old, a little bit chunky and very thick. <laughs> so it doesn't go on uh, very smoothly. So I cleaned up the edges just to make sure I had nice crisp edges. And then I went over the top with two good even coats of DIY in white swan. Once that was done, it was time to get out my decoupage paper. Now this is called Midnight Amber. It's by Redesign by Prima. It's a beautiful, beautiful paper. And I am just laying this down with uh, the Liquid Patina by DIY. And I just started at one end and put one good even coat of the Liquid Patina down, placed my paper, rubbed it really well into the, the Liquid Patina with my hand, and then moved my way across the entire piece. Once that was done and the paper was down and nice and smooth, I went over it one more time with a good even coat of liquid patina to seal it in and just make sure that it's placed down properly. Once the liquid patina is completely dry and cured, uh, it took probably at least three or four hours in front of the fan. 
Um, I am going in with some, I think this is 120 grit sandpaper and just kind of in a downward motion, sanding any excess off. Once that portion is done, it's on to sealing the aviary paint. And for that, I'm just using DIY's big top and go going over the entire uh, painted portion of this with one good even coat of big top. Now I did find that one of the corners of the paper had lifted so I just used a little bit more of the liquid patina to place that back down and then this piece is done. today's projects. I hope you like them. I hope you like the colors that I brought together. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are um, and which of the projects your favorite was. I always love to hear that. And uh, again, if you liked the video, I would really love it if you give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here and you haven't already, I would also love it if you think about subscribing to my channel and then just hit that little notification bell so you don't miss anything. Uh, my next video is coming out on Tuesday and it will be another thrift flip. So I've already finished a little end table for Tuesday's video and I'm working on a little tabletop cabinet and hopefully a lamp. So we will see. So I hope you'll join me for Tuesday's video and until then, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you then. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Bye.